All right, some heartfelt vacuuming later. Now it's time to weather the stone. Weathering is just what happens to rock naturally when it sits out over a long period of time, wind and rain, they'll get to it. And there are many ways again to do it, but this is the fastest way that I have seen people do on the old interwebs, and so I have used it myself. To do this, you're going to need a plumbing torch to be very careful with, and a spray bottle with water in it. Water. Not gasoline, not acetone, just water. Thank you, please. And what we're going to do here, which I will do on the back first because it comes off very, very quickly in the parent, is we're going to spritz this down with water. Then we're going to blast sections very carefully with our plumbing torch. The water is going to act as a heat sink. Any spot on here that's got water on top of it will be somewhat insulated from the heat. Any other section that doesn't is going to sink down and melt. This is going to make a mottled weathering effect, which will look really cool and is very quick and easy to apply. Uh, things to consider. Any area on your insulation that has this writing or dark spot on it will be... It's going to stick out. It's going to say R10. This is impressed into the foam a little bit extra right here. So this area I'm going to avoid hitting with the water so I can give it extra weathering and break that R10 up and make it totally invisible in the final product. So here we go. Let's weather. Spray bottle. Spritz your stone. Now avoid the R10. How much should you spritz? Test it out. Grab a piece that you haven't worked with yet. Then we're going to hold this just a little bit above and we're going to keep our eye on the stone. You're going to see the modeling is going to start to appear. I keep it on a lower heat because that gives me more control, but I really want this R10 destroyed. So away it goes in unrecognizability. give myself a little bit more heat. I should say the standard warnings apply. Well ventilated area. Don't be stupid. If you just put acetone on here at all, make sure the acetone's all gone before you start applying heat. Acetone is flammable and it will catch very easily. <laughs> As one of my students discovered during a project. That's been out for a while. You can see the texture that's generated on the stone. The other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit these edges with the heat just to make them a little bit more even. Very careful. I'm not going to spritz. I just want these edges to be smoother. being extremely careful here, obviously my hand's in the way, but I want to make sure this is visible to the camera. I would not do this normally if I was working on a stone by myself.
being very careful on my raised letters for the sheer fact that the heat will cause them to shrink and shrivel. I don't want them to do that too much. I just want them to get a little bit of speckling on them. What I'm going after now is there's spots where I see a sharp line between the stone front and side. So I'm just trying to hit it with the heat and smooth it out a bit, make it a little bit less clear. Could you use a heat gun for this? Absolutely. However, it's going to blow the water away. So you won't get the speckling effect to quite the same degree. It wasn't an age for me painting this with acetone. It was just a quick blast with some heat on some wet foam. And we've got all the modeling effect that we could want. This stone is clearly old. Well, hopefully you get the idea. This is what you're after with the modeling effect. Next thing is going to be sealing the outside, but I'm going to give it a while for this water to all evaporate off. And then we're going to seal up these gaps in the bottom, and we're going to seal all of these cracks here. Alright, so we're going to give this time to dry, and then finish it up. It's sealing time. Around the edges of your tombstone, you may yet find something that scientists are now calling a big flipping gap. And we need to do anything possible to make sure everybody on Halloween doesn't immediately know that you've just stuck two pieces of foam insulation together and called it a tombstone. So we need to take care of that. The choice for taking care of it, well, there's lots of choices. My primary two are wood filler and our old friend hot glue. I use hot glue around the base because I believe it is more water perma ah, more water proof even more waterproof and stop fluids from getting in there am I hideously worried if wetness gets in there no it's foam insulation I don't want however anything to start rotting in there you know just good policy make things as waterproof as possible particularly if it's a tombstone it's going to be sitting out in the wind and the rain and the muck for you know a month or more depending on how your haunt is so let's start sealing in the bottom gaps we have hot glue incidentally if you have screwed up and your bottom gaps are huge because you just made them way too big for the PVC. You might remember we have a lot of probably extra chunks of just foam insulation. So feel free to carve some of that up and stuff pieces in there. Hey, look what I found on the floor. I realized long ago that it's kind of stupid to be like, hey, just do this and then never show anybody. 
never works well for classes. All right, small piece of insulation. Let's chop it into some smaller pieces. Keeping it out of the fan that I have on me right now. Sorry if that makes a noise, but I looked at my air conditioner this unit this morning. I went over to turn it on and there was a note on it that said, save yourself. So pretty hot around here. So smaller pieces of insulation. Oh, that's gonna blow right off the table. Oh no. No, 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 no. There, I hide you from the wind, okay. So here are the gaps. Small piece of insulation, stuff in. Make this a little bit so the wider part. jamming sections of insulation in around any gaps if you find they're too big for you. To be honest, it's never usually a bad idea. It'll save you the amount of hot glue that you'd have to put in there. Because this whole thing, by the time we're done with it, is going to be sealed. Hot glue directly applied to R10 foam is going to melt down into it a little bit. Nothing to worry about. You can see how that's melted in a bit. And again, nothing to worry about. And the seal is being made. If you've got the space for it, I would recommend getting the tombstone up and vertical while you do this so the glue doesn't run all over the place. I really can't right now because I'm trying to film, but obviously if I was doing this by myself, you better believe that this would be in a more upright position so I don't have glue running all over the place. I only use hot glue on the bottom for the sheer fact that I believe this is the part of the stone that's going to be most in contact with the ground where moisture will be retained most readily. And I do also cover this with a layer of wood filler as well. Take no chances when it comes to moisture and props. The only issue I have had with hot glue in terms of overall waterproofing over time is that over many years, if you are storing this in a spot that freezes over winter, the constant freezing, warming, freezing, warming of the seasons will overall erode hot glue and just turn into a mess that pulls and peels right off. Very common. So, do some tombstone maintenance every now and again. It's worth it. The side cracks all the way up and through our old buddy wood filler works extremely well. How do you apply it? Ha, ha, ha. You could probably use some sort of spatula, you could use a plastic spoon. I like to just grab it with my hands because that way I can smooth it without a problem. Is wood filler a dangerous, evil chemical? Um, probably not. It says, don't get in touch with mucous membranes. That kind of includes your skin. Oh my god, these gloves are full of holes. Yeah. Suffice to say, if I don't know 100% what's in it, and I'm not 100% sure of it, a pair of latex gloves ain't going to kill anyone. Not even me. Oh wow. Make sure you, make sure you replace your latex gloves from time to time. My god. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Apparently they get old. 
And when they get old, they get full of holes. I haven't used my wood filler in a little while, so I am just kind of mushing things up a little bit. There was a layer of wet layer on the top. I'm just going to mix it like I would a little bit of older, drier paper clay. Obviously, read whatever directions you've got on your own brand of wood filler, because not everybody's going to get the Elmer brand. So, have I found a difference between brands? No, I've only used the one. So here we are. What wood filler is pretty much wood filler. You're going to mush your wood filler into the gap. Smooth out as you go. Here's a spot that shows a nice bit of dichotomy <clears throat> and kind of a, I hate to say a pro tip sensation or situation. You've got two spots here, one where there's an absolutely gigantic gap between and this section right here where there's a much smaller gap. If you're wood filling along, use smaller amounts of wood glue for areas where there's really no seam. You're not doing much more than masking the split. But if you do have areas where there's a large gap, then go ahead and use more. Some people may try to glob on huge amounts for an area that's just the tiniest of seams. You're just trying to cover and mask here, not completely super seal up the side of your tombstone. Have a little look while trying to keep the light on it, dummy. All right, now here I'm not happy because I can still see a ridge. So because I'm obsessive compulsive and I believe every little trick-or-treater is gonna walk around my tombstones in a full 360 degree arc and go, hey, Oh my god, look at the stupid bridge that's four inches long at the bottom that the dumbass left. I'm gonna actually uh, work on that some more.
good. All right, now there's no ridge visible. Other things you might notice as you do this is that um, the wood filler, depending on the brand you use, I probably should just mention, even though I flashed it before, I'm using Elmer's Wood Filler Max. Three times stronger. Whatever. So you might get little spots that tend to flake up. There's two good things about this. One, as they dry, they'll just break off. If you give them just a quick brush over with your hand, no problem. The other thing you can do is just mush them down and it'll go away. But be aware you might find that happening. The last bit I'm going to do here with this is I'm going to put wood filler on the bottom too. You don't really have to. I'm just obsessive compulsive about waterproofing. So if I can get one more layer on there, no, you better believe I'm going to do it. Wood filler, for any of you who may not already know, has the additional virtue that it can be sanded. So if you don't like the look of it, if it looks too rough, sand it down. Nobody's going to care. So again, you don't have to do that, but I just don't trust water. I never have. Not since a good friend of mine was killed by water. Walked right up to him in the street and shot him. I don't shower without body armor anymore, I swear to God. All right, at any rate, next step after this dries is gonna be painting. So, there we go.